I'll walk alone down the path that I already far too familiar with. Just because I'm out of sight of Murrow Christmas, that horrifying presence appears once again. Countless mouth surface and can crudely laughing. It's almost the finale of the tale. The ready to become crane and repays the man. Tonkari Tonkarari Tonkarari from beyond the door. However, I don't feel too bent out of shape. I figured it'd come right about now. Hey, you're here. What is it? You don't look too good. Did something happen on the way here? Well, that damn curse showed up. That time limit you were talking about. The house that only you can see up here, right? Sounds crazy to me, too. But spiritual phenomenons that only affected a person can receive are quite common. Besides, Kate had his blood metry, remember? It's not unusual that he would see quite a few things that others can't. It's supposed to be a death curse, but you don't seem too phased, Kate. Well, it's the third time it's happened. I think I'm kind of getting used to it. <laughs> You're getting used to it, seriously? <laughs> you really are an interesting child. I've seen many cursed people, but I've never seen anyone as dauntless as you. I guess Rose's not the only one here who is fearless. I can't keep up with you two, jeez. In any case, I don't have much time. This will be the settled before the sun rises. I see, I guess it's the third day, after all. More definitely getting closer to the truth. What all comes down to it, our main issue... Rosa looks up to the window. It's the fact that we haven't gotten there. We'll get there no matter what. Come on, let's start. We come to the front entrance of the Maroque residence once again. These frames, that must mean we're supposed to hang the masks here. That seems to be the case, but the issue comes where we place each of the masks. It's probably reason the mask that needs to be set here. Maroku is a fairy tale novelist, so this is likely to involve fairy tales. Who is essential under the blooming cherry tree story would involve a dead body? But another mass of a corpse, and that story by Mot Motojiro Kaji isn't a fairy tale. It must have made it Retribution, eh? It's like the old tale of the crab getting revenge for the mother that was killed. This probably represents the mass that needs to be said here. But the last could literally refer to anything. If we light up the mask we've found so far, maybe it'll give us an idea. Okay. Good night. You're about to miss the final battle.
Then, well, I did it. I did it right the first time. Ah. I have no. I kind of pulled that one out of my ass. Exactly. Come on, there's gotta be something pretty important up ahead. Something is inside the secret passageway. It's a ladder. Mm -hmm. It finally appeared. The final act is upon us. It certainly gives off a dangerous vibe. We better be prepared for anything if we're going to climb it. That means saving. <laughs> I climb up the ladder. I hold my breath as I climb up the ladder end. It was exactly as we figured. The vast attic fills our vision. I wonder what's behind the slide door. Yeah, let's be careful. I call the edge of the sliding door and I extend my hand to open it. I still look inside. What the? Nardiger appears as we hear the voice. Is this the screaming author? I know it's dangerous, but we have to do this. No matter what's lurking by the door, we just can't turn our backs here. I force open the sliding door in an attempt to rid myself of my fear and doubt. There's nothing there. That's what it looks like. Always is a completely empty room with yuck on the floor. There's an adult empty mirror here. Nothing stands out other than the fact that it's cloudy and doesn't reflect well. Just there's a lock on the chest. It's a pretty old lock. I'll need some special tools to open something like this. It means it's probably faster for us to just look for keys. Looks like even Rose can't do anything about this right now. We're about to leave and I notice that there's a sheet of black paper that was under the chest. What's this? Carbon paper. It's copying paper. Ever hear the phrase carbon copy? It's used to copy words. You should be able to see that. Here we go. I kneel on the tug. I'm adjust my breathing and quietly press my palm against the mat. If you have to go to bed, you go to bed. You can always watch it later on YouTube. But a massive gentle image has filled my mind and I can't tie them into a single image. This blood doesn't belong to one person. It, it's going to be really hard for me to get anything useful out of it. Good, huh? Let's go look for a key. It's an old typewriter. There are black stains all over the keys. They seem to be rusted. I'm not even sure if it'll work. Sorry, a sheet of paper is set into it. I can't. I see part of something typed on it. No, ungesi. Blank. No, ungesi. Looks like we must fill in the blank. There must be a reference to that crane fairy tale. So something fairy tale related that would complete blank times no onagesi. Alright. Most of blank sheets, but there's a few with some sort of title typed onto it. See Takira Hana Hana I Kobatori I Sitakira Hana and Kobatori I 
Sukiri must share the Sukiri Suzu with Mei, and Kobotari has to be Kotoji's son. Han and I certainly have feminine names to use as a reference to those tales, though. Yeah, the game does that. Puzzles, man. Puzzles. I think at this point I'm just like, I'm just gonna go through everything. Can we use this? Let's carefully examine the typewriter. Looks like it'll work. I'm sure you'll at least be able to type a few letters. My dog never wants to be left alone. I put the crumb paper into the typewriter and take the, pl the place of the ink to take the place of the ink crib. Keys are gonna I'm not sure. That would probably be there. <laughs> the moment of I'm not that smart. Socks. No. Most of blank sheets. Sati Kanegasen. Hmm. Sati Kanegasen sounds like it's a no to Sati Kanegasen. I'm not familiar with Moroku's work, but maybe the Sati bit would mean something to fans. You? No. I think I've tried everything. Yeah, I've tried everything. What am I missing? Around the property, perhaps we miss it. But then you just want partners. Sometimes it happens.
Oh, motherfuckers. That, it didn't actually even tell me that in the damn thing. It's just, fuck you. I feel around the section of the keys that look particularly dirty. It did not hint at blood being on the damn keys. Ahem, <laughs> ahem. I hear coughing sounds. They sound like they're coming from a person that's in pain. I think I've heard this voice before. This voice. Eventually the coughing stops in them. In a firm voice he says something. Engrave my fairy tale. Just now that was him. It's the voice of a man on the tape. Seems like he saw something. Engrave my fairy tale. That's what he said. As I speak the words, the typewriter begins to make sounds on its own. Looks like he wants to type with it. There's an old typewriter here, the black stains on it. Oh, fuck it. I missed that. Tsubasa. Are the only working keys, the words must only use those letters. I'm thinking of a different name to play. I feel all of it. Whoa. The keyboard starts clattering on its own again. Even the keys that were stuck earlier are now smoothly typing onto the paper. This is impressive. I've never seen such a clear case of psychography. We got cut it as paper fills with sense and rolls out typewriter. We pick it up the paper and look it over. This is what was written on it. I failed with many of them in the past, however I managed to save the fourth birdie. Though it is their role, all the birdies have lost their all four limbs. It's truly saddening. The fourth birdie wails that it does not want to be seen and it wants to die. Truly a pity. I shall at least give her wings and transform her from a little birdie into a beautiful crane. If she becomes a crane, I'm sure it would show me ut it would show me utmost gratitude even if it died. That's all that was the oh, that's disturbing. My pedophile thing was wrong. That's all the typewriter writes. Okay. Cade. Suddenly Rose points at the bed. Look over there. What is that? When did it get that way? There's now a bulge in the bed that looks like someone is sleeping in it. Oh the bulge is about the size of the grown man lying down sideways. It smells pretty awful in here. Yeah. Gravel stench violates our noses. We had been in this room several times before, but it never smelled like it did now. It smells like something's gone bad. I bet the bulge must be the cause. Well, disciple, take a look underneath. The smell gets more and more intense as I get closer to bed. Trying to breathe as little as possible, I place my hand at the core of the blanket and I pull it back in one motion. What the fuck is this? I... I want to know too. That looks like a penis. On the bed lies a lump of meat that is covered in rot. The skin of what looks like a head on a pillow seems to be infested with maggots. It looks like the corpse of a man. Why are there so many arms? The most weird thing about the corpse is that there are many arms stapled together. They are skinny and flexible looking. They must belong to little girls. Looks like the arms have been embalmed. These must be from people on the t Rose were cut off. What would why would anyone do this? Did the spirits do this? That wouldn't be my guess. Do you know what the tool next to the corpse is? That's a surgical stapler. It's used to staple up open wounds. It's for stapling together flesh, you mean. 
Yes, you're following. This man might have stapled the arms to his own body himself. I can't bear to look at the freakishly freakish corpse any longer, so I covered up and leave the room. That corpse must be that of Akumo Marobu. There were white strands of hair on his head, so it would match his age. Hang on. If Moroku's here, then who's the screaming author? Well, it's definitely someone who died in his house and held a powerful grudge. If it's not Moroku, who does that leave? Here in the word grudge, my mind immediately thinks of the tear-filled screams and pleas of the girls that were recorded on those tapes. That means... I recall the contents of the Tsubasa no Agresi that came out of the typewriter earlier. I failed many times in the past of our mention to not kill the fourth birdie, because I'm sure that even if we were to die, it would be able to die in peace. We haven't found the fourth girl doll, and what the title Tsubasa no Onagaisi indicates, the spirit, must be T, the last girl killed by Moroku. Fuck. If my stomach turned once again, yet another time in it's happened since I entered the place. I'm sure any sane person would feel the same, but I can't allow myself to look away from it. I have to face the tragic reality. If I can't, then I may as well just embrace my coming death. Ah, oh, that's right. I'll let you hold on to this. It was next to the pillow where the corpse was. Rosalie tells me a small pouch to me. We'll see. He needs old key, a syringe with liquid, and an empty medicine bottle. The label on the bottle reads Mitozolum. If I recall correctly, I believe that's a sedative. He probably used it while performing surgery on the girls. The key is probably... It probably goes to the chest in the attic. The size matches with the keyhole. The old chest in the back of the attic that seemed like it was hidden away. Seems like it's finally time to open it. This feeling. The green mouth pierced my brain. The tail has reached happily ever after. Don't peek in. 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 Don't, 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 don't. I don't have much time left. I gotta go to the attic. We return to the attic. The paper lantern is emitting a white light. What the hell's going on? The sliding door is now completely open, and I hear what sounds like pain breathing. I pleaded and pleaded, and still... What do you mean you pleaded? After clicking my tongue, I walk towards the voice to see what's there. My whole body is wrapped up in something that comes from overhead. I'm completely jerked up into the air, and the impact caused me to drop my flashlight. Oh crap, the flashlight! I feel like I'm a bug that's floating around inside a spider web. This is not good. Fuck, what the hell's going on? Rose, you're in the way. Move over. So, sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. If you haven't noticed that I'm upside down. Ugh. I squeeze my head against Rose's body so I can actually see. Fun shit right there. <sighs> a dark slit falls from the ceiling and his outline began to gradually form. Shit, so this is the screaming author. In the front, a scream pierces my mind and I see stars for a minute. I think, how could I, should I deal with this? Once again, I take a deep breath and try to focus my concentration on one point. But. I think the fact that I'm tied up like this is preventing me from fully concentrating. You gotta be kidding me. I have to stop that voice. Damn it, I can't move. If it helps, I believe I have the use of one of my arms. Got any ideas? The wire is stretched very tightly, it seems like it's kind of resonated. That's the that's pack at the passage. Rode mimic to mimic, uh, communicate and cry, and we managed to survive. Uh, hurry, hurry! 
Hey, take the clump of stiff hair out of my backpack. Clump of stiff hair? What on earth do you, could you need that at a time like this? Stop talking, just hurry up and get it out. Yeah, stop talking because I can't. Got it, what should I do with it? Rub it against the wall as hard as you can. If you say so, here goes nothing. Rose straightens the bundle of hair and firmly rubs on the wire. How? She only has one hand. The hair is still being rubbed on the wire, and the scream gradually dies down. The screaming other moves a bit, which causes us to move around quite a bit too. In my new position, I can't see what's in front of me once again. On the bright side, the movement also frees up one of my arms. Hey, are you alright? This isn't good. The wire shifted and now I really can't move anymore. The voice is coming from above me. It looks like the way I feel on my back is rosé. Forcing my head into the position where I can see again, I see the screaming author's bird-like legs. Not a crane! Please, not a crane! Is it... crying? I can't move. This is, uh, this is on your shoulders. Yeah, so is she. Not a crane. What the hell does it want me to do? Here's where I fucked up the first time. I remember what was written on the ballet flight that we found in the bedroom. First act, collection of pieces, ballet others, second act, luck de Ukraine. Please enjoy their energy and spirit as they perform adorning adorable colors. If the screaming author is Child T, the girl who's killed last, she must regret how she wasn't able to perform at that recital. I take out the spray paint, reach towards the legs, and start spraying. What are you doing? I paint birds like I paint the bird like leg yellow. The screen off it looks at its legs end. It feels like it smells a bit. The screen off it reposes itself once more. Whoa! I feel like I'm a blender or a clothes dryer as the world my world flips upside down. Oh, I'm all tangled up again, I can only move my legs, and this time I'm upside down. The wire's got looser, so I can move now, but I don't think it can take much more of this. B burn it! Burn all of it! What? What's it saying? What's wrong? Let's hurry up and do something. It'll flip us over again if we dwaddle. I don't know. Let's do this. I see the fire from the paper lantern that Tommy mats above my head. I might be able to reach it. Oops, let me see. Really? Take the incense from my backpack and light on the fire with the paper lantern. Lantern, huh? It's a bit far, though. Ro Rose tries to reach the lantern. This sense just can't quite reach the paper lantern. Well, in that case. Hey, this is going to hurt it, but focus and power through, okay? And just what exactly are you scheming? My reply to Rosé is a heavy kick to the back with my free leg. Ow! The force of the kick is enough to get the incense to touch the lantern's flames. Smoke creeps out of the incense where it touched the fire, and it quietly starts to burn. We did it! Alright, I have a fire source now. Just gotta find a spot that'll burn easily. The screen rather flaps again and my world spins once more. I'm now basically face to face with it, which makes it seem intentional. Amazing. Rose is rendered speechless. Yuck. Hurry, hurry! Yucko. The screaming off sounds like it's trying to tell us something. I'm unable to move again. Hold on, I'll end this.
it's the extreme at the top. Or should I strike to finish that? Alright. Rose, pass me the incense. I'll try, give me a moment. Ugh. Rose moves around, though bound, and tries to hand me the lit incense, but we try a bunch of times, but I still can't get it. It's impossible, I can't reach you. Guess we have no choice, throw it to me. Ooh. If it doesn't work, no hard feelings. Get it. get ready, I'm going to throw it. With the fuck of the rest, the incense gets tossed toward me in an odd arc. If I just sit like this, I won't catch it. Ugh, come on, reach. The wire digs deeply into my fish, but I fight through the pain and reach out for it. Hot! The incense scorched my fingertips, but I managed to grab hold of it. Incroyable! Incroyable. Use it too! This'll do it. Stretch my arm out as far as I can and press a lit incense into the screaming author. What? Is something wrong? Just hold on, I'll... The screaming author stares at us quietly, but... Then it shakes its head slightly and takes a deep breath to scream again. Which is said at that moment. It's closed, catch fire, and the flames engulf them. to be a duck when she died. Inside the flames, the screaming author kicks its legs almost joyfully and then falls to ashes on top of the tatami mat.